welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Mel Gedroich. Now, in the news this week, at number 10, advisers urge Rishi Sunak to carry his cash around in a less conspicuous way. <laughs> <laughs> Attending yet another mind-numbingly boring government conference on road maintenance and town planning, one man's magic mushrooms kick in at just the right time. <laughs> <laughs> and at Liverpool's John Lennon Airport, after losing to Sweden, two disgruntled Eurovision backing dancers begin the long journey home. <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is a journalist and broadcaster who's also written a couple of novels, including The Legacy of Elizabeth Pringle. A great read if you find yourself in a tightly packed tube. <laughs> Please welcome <laughs> Kirsty Walk. <laughs> On Paul's team tonight is a Scouse comedian who's such a committed fan of Liverpool Football Club that he knows exactly how many boos there are in <laughs> God Save the King. Please welcome <laughs> Chris McCausland. <laughs> We begin with the bigger news stories of the week. Ian and Kirsty, take a little look at this. Uh, this is for Chris. This is um, the Home Secretary with a policeman being arrested and deported. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there's some fruit pickers there in black and white. Oh. oh. Jacob Rees Mogg saying hello to a lorry driver. Hello, Eddie Stobart. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the British Prime Minister meeting the Japanese Prime Minister. What can the Japanese want from us? Is that a trade deal? I think it's a defence deal as well. Oh, right, OK. Um, they're, they're borrowing our army. We're sending all three guys over there. <laughs> <laughs> this is the news that Rishi Sunak is big in Japan. Uh, while back home... <laughs> as opposed to diminutive here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember big in Japan? No. No. OK. <laughs> <laughs> 1984, mm. Alphaville, mm. big in Japan, <laughs> great song. Yeah? Yeah. Let's move on. Uh, it's quite catchy. It's quite catchy. <laughs> I think I've heard it myself about four times in the last minute. <laughs> <laughs> Can't get it out of your head once you hear it. I know. <laughs> catchy in the sense that coronavirus was. <laughs> Why is the Prime Minister big, big in, in Japan? Japan. <laughs> He's gone abroad to avoid all the Conservatives telling him he's awful. <laughs> he's got to find somewhere to go um, where they don't hate him. Yes. And Japan, they don't know who he is. <laughs> yeah, he went to the G7 summit. Here he is on the plane over to Japan. Look, Rishi, for the last time, would you like the chicken or would you like the fish? <laughs> <laughs> What's the particular worry for Rishi? Sunak. I don't want to call him just Rishi. That's awful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. it's a bit too familiar. Terrible. It's like calling Boris Johnson criminal. <laughs> <laughs> What's the particular worry for Rishi Sunak that involves Taiwan? I think you mean Liz Truss, don't you? Well, yes. I oh, I think God. he's more scared of Liz Truss than he is of the entire Red Army. <laughs> Liz Truss has been there. Here she is. Chris, just so you know, Liz looks as if she's sticking her head out of a little coffin, mini coffin. <laughs> She's gone over, hasn't she? She's telling everyone we should be watching out for China. I mean, she's changed the tune, hasn't she? Whatever happened to the pork markets, Liz? <laughs> <laughs> you told us Beijing was open to our pork and they were gagging for it. <laughs> Jeremy Hunt is also in Japan. Is he? Standing like this. <laughs> I know, Chris, it's the really embarrassing sort of crotch central power stance. Mm. Judging by the stretch of those trousers, he's big in Japan, I think. <laughs> Does anyone in this room remember Big in Japan? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Oh, Alphaville. <laughs> um, back home, the first National Conservatism Conference oh. was held. NatCon. DefCon 2. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a rather unfortunate abbreviation. It's quite a lot of right-wing conservatives from around the world, and someone said it's Nazi, so all the Nat Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Which is unfair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually going to call it NatCon Con, so it sounds like Comic Con. At least one person is with me on this. <laughs> 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 I 
So how was Suella Braverman seen to be repositioning herself? Well, she's sort of standing for leader, really, and yeah. un undermining him. The Home Secretary appeared at a number of these conferences saying, immigration's completely out of control. I mean, who's in charge? <laughs> <laughs> and then someone pointed out that she's the Home Secretary. Oh, <laughs> and it's actually her job. Yes. So she's seriously protesting against the government she's yeah. part of. And I think nowadays, literally under the Public Order Act, if you protest against your own government, yeah. you're arrested. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at her. <laughs> What does Braverman want British people to do? Butchering. Butchering. Also... Picking fresh fruit, picking fruit off trees. Yeah. The problem with British people picking fruit is you have to weigh us on the way out. <laughs> yes, that's true. Have you ever picked any fruit? I pick fruit. Ian? Yeah, Lemon gooseberries. Lemon. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, Paul, have you ever picked... Yes, kumquats in the Lebanon. <laughs> <laughs> Show off. <laughs> How is the foreign worker situation going for... Suella. The numbers aren't good. Mm. The Tory party having made an enormous fuss about people arriving on boats. Yeah. It turns out that legal migration, instead of being tens of thousands, is about a million. The thing is, when Rishi Sunak gave these five goals, it was the beginning of the year, wasn't it? He didn't give any exact targets, he didn't give any deadline, and then at the end he said, and we'll either achieve it or we won't. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a promise. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's 50% right. <laughs> <laughs> you, you want to stop the small boats? Well, we, I think we should maybe just, like, pay Coldplay to play relentlessly off the south coast. <laughs> and then anyone coming over will see it and go, oh, my God, I thought it was miserable where I came from. <laughs> Jacob Rees-Mogg also gave a speech at the event, Nat Con Con. No, it's good of him to wear a high-vis jacket. It makes it easier for snipers. <laughs> <laughs> He was interrupted by Dirk Campbell. Here he is. Looking like a barbershop group. <laughs> <laughs> now, 72-year-old Dirk Campbell is an Extinction Rebellion activist. Let's have a little look as he joins Jacob Rees-Mogg on stage. The, um, no no, no uh, grease paint, but bright lights. Um, National Conservatism. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, you all look very nice people, and I'm sure you are. Fantastically nice people, uh, but I would like to draw your attention to a few characteristics of fascism. Well, thank Just you. Because <laughs> of... <laughs> I mean, it took five blokes to, to, to get him off set. I could have taken him off stage. Kirsty, you could have done. By the legs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Interesting though, that none of them tried to glue themselves in place because they wanted to cause a scene, but none of them actually wanted to have to sit through the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> the Daily Telegraph yes. uh, decided to dig up a little bit of info on Dirk. Do you know what it was? Do you know what they found out? He's an ex-pilot. No, he's got a sort of pilot's voice, though, hasn't he? Yes, he does have a pilot's yeah, voice. We'll certainly be landing in <laughs> Barcelona. Yes, I would feel comfortable in Dirk's hands. Would you really? Oh! oh. I don't think you can get an Extinction Rebellion pilot. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be cruising at an altitude of zero feet and glued to the runway for the remainder of the journey. The Daily Telegraph accused him of hypocrisy because as well as being an Extinction Rebellion activist, he's written music for car adverts. Other adverts he's worked on include Dane Pack, LucasAid, Britvic, Lilt, Ocean Spray, Vitel, Purdy's, Rice Krispies, LG Electronics and Bailey's Irish Cream. Gang, I sense a quiz coming on. <laughs> Paul loves a little quiz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> now, teams, you ready? You called us a gang again. Every time you come on the show, you call us a gang. Um, yeah. Did, we're, we're not a gang. We no. are. I'd like to be in a gang. Oh, right, okay. oh. We're in a gang. We're all in a gang. What was the slogan for Rice Krispies? Snap, crackle and pop. Well done, Kirsty. Lucas Aid. Aid recovery. Aid recovery. Nice Paul. Yeah. Land Rover. It's a car. No. <laughs> the slogan is Snap, crackle and crash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. <laughs> it's the best four by four by far. Oh, sorry. I'm hearing the fun now has to stop. The quiz is now at an end. <laughs> 
So I would like a message to tell us when the fun has started. <laughs> <laughs> That game is big in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> now, before our quiz, we were talking about Jacob Rees-Mogg getting interrupted. Braverman also got interrupted. Yes. Uh, shall we take a little look? Defining. It's basically a guy gets taken out and then a lady with a fringe gets taken out. I mean, I appreciate the description, but I like the way that you think that the fringe was important in... in... <laughs> <laughs> she got taken out because of the fringe. Yeah. Wouldn't it be funny if everybody in the audience was a protester and one by one... <laughs> They were carried out until she was just talking to a, a, a hall full of empty seats. Yes, no, but... I'm Extinction Rebellion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, she looked a bit more like a protester than, than he did. She at least had a fringe, which is kind of... protesting. Now... <laughs> <laughs> what, for a fringe event? <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all saw that Joe, but Ian was it's... brave enough to go there. Yeah. <laughs> Brave yes, I'm a, I'm a braver man than you. Oh, <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> While Braverman was at the uh, NatCon Con, uh, what was Sunak doing? Does anyone know? He was doing something in his garden. Burying the money. <laughs> <laughs> he was holding something. Oh. His breath. No. <laughs> he was holding. Moire. A not a sort of almost Chris. Oh, a, a, a garden party. Mm, it was mm. a, it was a specialist garden party. Oh, bonsai garden party. It wasn't bonsai. <laughs> <laughs> was Guess where they're big. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Chris. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> he was holding. Oh, a pork pie party. Ah! Yes. Nice. Uh, he was holding it for Conservative backbenchers in the garden number 10, at which he promised to deliver, deliver, deliver. But the pork pie isn't made of deliver, deliver, <laughs> deliver. Yeah. Because it's made of de pork, de pork, de pork. <laughs> um, and perhaps unwisely, he continued, <laughs> my, commitment to, <laughs> my commitment to delivery is such that I have had crates of food and drink delivered. <laughs> We might lose that whole section, who knows? <laughs> um, <laughs> this is Rishi Sunak's trip to Japan. Reports say the Prime Minister's wife is keen to do some shopping while in the country. When asked whether there was anything in particular that caught her eye, she said, Tokyo. <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere, GB News have announced a revamp of editorial policy, promising to attempt to air fewer conspiracy <laughs> theories. <laughs> <laughs> or is that just what they want us to think? <laughs> Uh, Paul and Chris, here's your one. Paul, if you wouldn't mind describing uh, what there is there. OK, well, I hope my verbal skills can match the... <laughs> <laughs> it's a sausage roll on a plate that's spinning, and that's it. Is this the war in Ukraine? Yeah. And war. this is all that Russia have got left to throw? Yeah. <laughs> This is Greg's. Greg's. Is Greg's. I... Yes, absolutely. This is the news. that You can now get a sausage roll from Greg's, the bakers, until 2am in Leicester Square in London. There's some people in the news go, ooh, yeah. 2am, <laughs> <laughs> eh? <laughs> you ever been to a Greg's, Ian? Yeah, I worked there 25 years. <laughs> what was your biggest seller while you were there working yes, 25 yeah. years, would you say? Um, uh, the vegan yeah. um, roll. <laughs> <laughs> You ever heard of Greg's lasagna? No. It's a steak bake with a cheese pasty on top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the result of an intricate legal compromise between Westminster City Council and Greg's. Now, what are the ins and outs of this compromise? Well, there's a door. <laughs> <laughs> They've got to have bouncers, haven't they? Yes. Yeah. In Greg's? They've got to have bouncers in Greg's. Why, do people try and steal them? No, they're trying to throw people in. <laughs> Council don't want people hanging around Greg's in Leicester Square and making it a magnet for antisocial behaviour. You yeah. imagine being a bouncer on Greg's, by the way. You'd be the laughing stock of the bouncer world, wouldn't you? 
<laughs> you're made to be like, well, have a good night at work, Dave. Try not to get any crumbs on yourself. <laughs> 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 Do you know what is so special about the Greg's concession in a Primark shop in Newcastle? <laughs> what special feature does it have, apart from the big spongy donut chairs? It's a sausage roll swing. You're absolutely right, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and they're allowed it because the swing is ambient. Right, yeah. <laughs> what happened to a sausage roll at the football ground of Scottish Cup finalists Inverness Caledonian Thistle? Is it their mascot? Uh, I don't think so. No. Nope. I'm going to give you a big clue. What happens when you put a sausage roll in the oven for too long? It burned. Yes, it was, it was burned, exactly. Here it is. <laughs> That's that sausage hellish, isn't it? I think it? this is as exciting as it gets in Scottish football. <laughs> <laughs> Can I just say... Yeah. I yeah. shared a yes. deep-fried Mars bar... Did you? ..at the Edinburgh Festival with Les Dennis mm. at 4am in the morning. Yeah. But the most delicious thing I've ever eaten. Did you and Les start at one end each and work your way to the middle? <laughs> <laughs> Staying with sausage rolls. Yes. What have one in ten people admitted to doing with their sausage roll? Taking the sausage meat out and throwing the bit of pastry away. No. It's dunking sausage rolls in their tea. Oh, oh, this is according to the Daily Star. Ten percent of people in Britain do that. Um, well, no, they don't. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm not. laughs> OK, look, we'll have a straw poll of the audience here. How many people have dunked sausage roll in their tea? Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Are you suggesting the Daily Star just makes these polls up? <laughs> Suspiciously round figure, 10%. <laughs> Thankfully, the paper went to an expert... Yes. ..who gave their professional opinion that the practice was... ..evil. <laughs> and fictional. Yeah. <laughs> what was the expert's name? Professor Madeup. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why does any of this matter? It doesn't. Doesn't, no. It doesn't. <laughs> it really doesn't. Now, what was washed up in Norfolk this week? Uh, Rishi Sunak. <laughs> <laughs> Old crisp packets. That's right, yeah. yeah. They just don't decay. It was actually in Scratby in Norfolk. <gasps> oh, look at that! It looks lovely, cos it sounds like a shithole, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's the slogan on the town when you drive in. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a shithole, but looks great! <laughs> Lucky holiday maker Chris Turner found four crisp packets. Here they are. Have a look. One is called dipsticks. No, chipsticks. Chipsticks. Chip chip Come on. <laughs> <laughs> You've been presenting Newsnight for too long. <laughs> Do you remember when salt and vinegar was blue? Yeah. Yes. And cheese and onion was green. Yeah. And then one day we all woke up and it was just the other way around. <laughs> and no one ever explained why. <laughs> or apologised. <laughs> <laughs> what is less likely to be washed up over the next decade? Big announcement this week. Is it turf? Sewage? You're talking yes. about sewage? sewage. Right. Sewage. Well, someone loves sewage in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> sewage are Braverman. Sewage. <laughs> Water companies in England have apologised for repeated sewage spills and have pledged to invest 10 billion quid this decade, which they've promised to pass on to us. <laughs> through increased bills, so <laughs> lovely stuff. Yeah, it took 20 years for the message to get through that people don't like turds in rivers and on beaches. So the people in charge of the water company say, yeah, we'll do something about it and you can pay. Yes. They didn't mention their own bonuses, they didn't no. mention 20 years of underinvestment. It's no amazing investment. that, isn't it? This is the news that Greggs have won the right to stay open until 2 in the morning at their flagship Leicester Square store. A condition of the late licence is that Greggs is required to have bouncers on the door to keep order as revellers queue for their sausage rolls. 31% fat, 43% gristle are the main requirements to be a Greggs bouncer. <laughs> <laughs> Late night revelers in Leicester Square will now be able to order Greg's iced donuts. Sprinkles? No need. I just had a piss in your doorway. <laughs> <laughs> Greg's has teamed up with Primark to create a joint superstore in Newcastle so you can buy tracksuit trousers, a t shirt, and a sausage roll as part of their special giving up on life meal deal. <laughs> <laughs> And so to round two, the noise of news. Fingers on buzzers, teams, as I generate the first sound clue. No one will care about the love, <gasps> no one is Who buzzed? Kirsty. Tattoo. 
Absolutely. Tattoo, which was the winning song. This is the news. That, the most watched Eurovision song contest ever, was held in Liverpool on Saturday. All I know about it is you hosted it. No, I didn't host. What I did just you do? no. I don't even know that. No, no, Chris. <laughs> I, I no. I just did a bit of commentary when Graham was out on stage. All I know is you did some commentary on it. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, gang, I'm still there. And to be honest, gang leader, we weren't. <laughs> I reckon, do you know, it's not like the, the Olympic Village has got a reputation for being just like everyone having sex with each other. I reckon it's that, but just, I, I mean, I don't think anyone left without an STD. <laughs> there was a lot of flummery and... Uh, what, oh! Flummery. What is the STD? Is that a Conservative conference? <laughs> <laughs> but I read in the paper that you dressed up as a milkmaid. <gasps> Again? <laughs> Just say seriously, I was really worried that I'd underdone it, and I, <laughs> I don't, I don't see that. That is appalling. Over I'm amazed you don't have to pay for that on some obscure <laughs> channel. Did you watch it, Paul? No, no, I was in a medically induced coma. <laughs> <laughs> My wife Suki showed me the Croatian entry, which was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, men in underpants. Yes. Mama shich, mama shich. Well, we've all got our problems. <laughs> <laughs> We didn't do very well, Britain, is that right? No. no we I... never do. We did um, reasonably well last year. We came when we did Lulu. Lose. Lulu? Lulu. <laughs> yeah, Lulu. When was that? 69. Before the war. 1969. <laughs> I like the way we're talking about how old them Chris packets were on the beach, but then we're happy to hang out on Lulu winning the Eurovision. <laughs> 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 now, this year's Eurovision was widely thought to have been taken more seriously <laughs> by the actors. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Than in previous years. Have they kidnapped your children? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the impressive work of a BBC British Sign Language interpreter dealing with Finland's entry. <laughs> How did Finland show their support for Carrier back home in Finland? Slaughtered the innocent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that's going to be the tone of my answers until this subject changes. <laughs> Joined NATO. Yeah. <laughs> Open to Greg's. Yeah. <laughs> they dressed up uh, the iconic statues at Helsinki Central Railway Station in green Carrier outfits. There we go, there they are. <laughs> now, what did Zelensky have to say about the UK hosting the contest on behalf of Ukraine? He said, thank you. Yeah. And can I have some more guns? <laughs> Planes, tanks, anything. Rishi Sunak wanted him to speak, but he wasn't allowed to. No, EBU said it was too political. Yep. He um, should have represented you... Ukraine, shouldn't he, with a song just called Give Us Your F-16s, Bitches. Yeah. <laughs> He also told the BBC, I have great respect for the United Kingdom and its society, but I would have preferred it to have been hosted by Poland or Slovakia <laughs> or somewhere nearby. <laughs> How did Uber driver Thomas Michael describe the experience of having Eurovision in his hometown? He told the Sunday Times, I hate it, it's really not my bag, the traffic is terrible. <laughs> Adding, I don't mind the money, though. <laughs> This is the news that the most watched Eurovision song contest ever was held in <laughs> Liverpool on Saturday. The BBC recorded massive viewing figures which peaked at 11 million, just in case you were wondering how many gay men there are in Britain. <laughs> 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 Some UK pundits questioned the presence of several non-European countries in a European competition, such as Australia, Israel and, most of all, Britain. <laughs> <laughs> Here is your next noise of news. <laughs> Ian. I think it's an American police it is. Yeah. There was a chase involving yeah. Prince Harry. What happened during the incident, do you know? Well, it's much contested. Oh. Mm. One version was yep. it was a catastrophic car chase through New York at immense high speed at which nearly everybody in the city died. <laughs> 
<laughs> and there's another version coming from the mayor and the policeman saying, yeah, well, you know, they, they were chasing them a bit, but it's all right and everyone's fine. You're right, though, Ian, because according to their spokesperson, while travelling back from an awards ceremony in New York, the Prince, Meghan and her mum were followed by paparazzi, which led to a near-catastrophic car chase, it being near-catastrophic because without their statement, the press nearly didn't pick up on it. Um... <laughs> <laughs> The taxi driver who, who drove them, he mm. said, well, it wasn't really a chase. <laughs> right, that's it. <laughs> that was the taxi. I mean, obviously, the paparazzi were there and they yeah. behaved very badly, as usual, and started following them, but I think the events from there have got a little, a little amplified. The NYPD confirmed that an incident took place involving Harry, Meghan and her mother and said their two-hour journey had been challenging. I can imagine. Poor Mum probably didn't get a word in edgeways. Um, <laughs> Sticking with the royals. What coronation item stopped somebody at airport security this week? I know what this is. Come it's on. It's a piece Chris. of cake. Yes! It was a piece of cake and it got stopped at the airport because yep. the coronation cake, the official coronation cake, mm -hmm. um, had exactly the same density as plastic explosives. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely right, Chris. Yeah. Absolutely right. I, I mean, I don't think that's something that you never hear that on Bake Off, do you? <laughs> quite quite syntaxy. <laughs> <laughs> Marzipan does look like syntax, though, yeah. doesn't it? Oh, I don't know why I looked at you, Kirsten. <laughs> <laughs> You're casting aspersions on my marzipan. So, <laughs> what was actually in the coronation cake? Syntax. <laughs> It contains sultanas, yeah. raisins, glacé cherries, mm. and a... And £160 million pounds worth of public money. <laughs> <laughs> According to Chef Robert Craggs, decorating the fruit cake took 160 hours. Well, Charles wanted to look good for the occasion. <laughs> the fruit cake was actually second choice for King Charles's coronation cake. First choice was a Black Forest Gatto, until a family member anxiously inquired exactly how black the cake would be. <laughs> <laughs> how do we know that one resident of the Nottinghamshire village of Ruddington isn't a fan of King Charles? Oh, it's explosives in this cake. <laughs> <laughs> Topery. Oh, it's more... They've knitted a post box. Post box topper. Yeah. You just put it over the... Postbox, yeah. and no one will disturb it because no one's going to collect the mail. Let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to jail. bring satire into everything, Ian. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Yet this week, the BBC reported that a knitted effigy of King Charles that sits on top of a postbox has been beheaded three times. <laughs> Here is the headless monarch. <laughs> Camilla looks quite happy about the whole thing. <laughs> and finally. What has Prince Andrew been desperately trying to hang on to this week? His house. His house. Yeah, his house. <laughs> I thought it was his liberty. <laughs> <laughs> his 30-room residence at Royal Lodge he's trying to hang on to after being asked to move into the smaller Frogmore cottage. 30 rooms. Yes. I mean, if there's a fella that hasn't got 29 people that want to visit him. <laughs> 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 According to the Daily Mail, he's worried that the royals will turn off the electricity and gas to force him out. Well, half an hour without access to the dark web, he'll be out looking for an internet cafe. <laughs> <laughs> they could always reconnect the gas without telling him. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round. Ian and Kirsty, your four are Theresa May, Rishi Sunak, French economy minister Bruno Le Maire and Nadine Doris. One of them's French. Yeah, but there's something else. He is the economy <laughs> minister. I thought there might be Kirsty. <laughs> <laughs> he is the economy minister, right? He has written a steamy sex novel. Mm -hmm. Well, Nadine wrote quite steamy, raunchy books. On what you were just saying, Rishi said his favourite book was Riders by Jilly Cooper. Ah, yeah. Did he? Yes. It oh my... just doesn't bear thinking. How wet is that? <laughs> <laughs> Theresa May has maybe written books about crops. <laughs> 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 she's not writing, but are you, are you saying she's the one out? No, I'm saying Rishi... <laughs> She hasn't written anything. She, she's trying to tell you she's the odd one out. <laughs> Theresa May's the odd one out. Theresa May's the odd one out. 
I think I think you were so close. No, you you were about good. to say that, Kirsty. No, we, we no, weren't I even really near. Oh, okay. <laughs> say, yeah. They're all fans of erotic fiction, apart from Theresa May, who inspired a scene in an erotic novel. Do you know what? about this? Yep. Oh <laughs> yes, Fifty Shades of May. <laughs> I'd read it. Former number 10 aide Cleo Watson was inspired to write her erotic novel, Whips, <laughs> after, sp after spending time with Theresa May. Watson said the scene came to her at Checkers when she watched Theresa May wrestle with the Brexit rebels in her party. <laughs> this moment then led her to write a passage in the book where during a party at Checkers, an MP and another MP's wife have a fling and a protection officer in the garden spots a pair of pale bum cheeks <laughs> undulating against a stained glass window for all to see. I'm sorry, bum cheeks? Uh, <laughs> was the window stained before or just after? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Which book has Rishi Sunak admitted to being a fan of? Jilly Cooper's Riders, yeah. uh, a wealthy toff frolicking with show jumpers in the Cotswolds. Uh, who did Jilly Cooper admit that she'd based that toff in Riders on? Not Lord Helsham, is it? <laughs> 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 oh, I know it's Camilla's ex-husband. Yes. Anthony Parker Bowles. Andrew. Andrew. Hey. Oh, she married twice, did she? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> What was the French press's reaction to Bruno Le Maire's book? Was the reaction, um, poo? <laughs> <laughs> it's been widely ridiculed, with publications focusing on one particular sex scene. Huffington Post went with the headline, Bruno Le Maire has written about an anus and no one was ready for this. <laughs> Nadine Doris, we've talked about this. She's such a big fan of erotic fiction that she's written several herself. Mm. How did The Telegraph's Christopher Howes review her first novel, The Four Streets? The Four Streets. <laughs> Three streets too many. Yeah. <laughs> Dreadful. Almost. He said it was the worst novel I've read in ten years. <laughs> in one novel set in Ireland, she wrote movingly, no one in their right mind ever had a bad word to say about a potato. <laughs> Why are we quoting this sad woman's <laughs> execrable writing? <laughs> she was the culture secretary. <laughs> Nadine Doris's talk TV colleague, Mike Graham, had a story of his own for viewers this week. Yeah. Check it out. And I happened to record this in the garden at the weekend. Um, have a look at this. A piece of spaghetti and a squirrel. The squirrel is actually eating the spaghetti. If you look at it, it really is quite extraordinary. I've never seen anything like it. We put the spaghetti out for the dog, but the squirrel got to it first. Um, and he just continues to eat it until it disappears. I mean, I don't know, what, I don't know how to describe it, really. God. The thing is, the fella, he goes in the video, the squirrel's eating pasta. I can't describe it, I can't put it into words. But he did. Yeah. <laughs> it's literally a squirrel eating pasta. <laughs> he needs to have more faith in himself, really, doesn't well, he? I think so. Well, okay. The blind man understands yeah. the picture in his head, a squirrel eating pasta. Yeah. <laughs> so we mean this I think he's done a good job. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, he didn't reference a knife and fork or the napkin it had stuck in its collar. <laughs> Sticking with animals, who's clearly worried that they've left the dog on its own for too long? Is it some internet footage of a dog behaving quite strangely on its own? Nope, it's a BBC Look North reporter. Yeah. Gave it away when she had a slip of the tongue during her sign-off. Have a look at this. Well, that's all from us tonight. Look North is back in BBC Breakfast from 6.25. Good boy. <laughs> Chris, your four are Mark Zuckerberg, Rod Stewart, Bez from Happy Mondays and dogs at a pet expo in Thailand. From Rod Stewart. He's got a football under his arm. We know he's a keen football fan, a mm -hmm. Scottish football fan. Well done. Um, so football's in the right area, is it? Sport. Yeah. OK, so sport in general. OK, so, I mean, what, what sport do you think Bez could uh, get involved in that wouldn't involve drug tests? <laughs> <laughs> He does, he does judo. Mark Zuckerberg. Oh, Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg. Jiu-jitsu. 
Uh, they all do sports uh, of their own free will, apart from the poodle that's glued to that skateboard <laughs> and pushed down, <laughs> push down a ramp against its will. What Paul you just said before, yes. totally in the right area, but the wrong odd one out. I think, well, the odd one out is Mark Zuckerberg. Nope. I oh, know he isn't, no. <laughs> I, what, I, what I meant was that Bez was the odd one out. Nope. No, the poodle's the odd nope. one out. Well, it's got to be Rod Stewart. He's yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that ironic burst of applause. <laughs> no, they've all been taking part in sport, apart from Rod Stewart, who has had to reduce his sport participation. Yes. So what sporting activity has Rod had to cut down on? So he's had to cut down on playing football? Yeah, he recently told The Sun he's had to stop kicking signed footballs into the audience at his concerts. Oh, right, yes. He's been sued twice by injured fans. <laughs> During one gig at the Hollywood Bowl, a friend who'd flown over especially to watch him got smashed in the face with a football that Rod kicked, which broke his glasses. And who else has been on the wrong end of one of Rod's balls? <laughs> God knows. A couple in Macomb County uh -huh. said that a finger injury from a football at Rod's 1989 show led to the breakup of their marriage. The wife went on to add, but I'm still a Rod Stewart fan. Oh my God. Is this a topical news show? Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> Which sporting hobby has Happy Mondays star Bez recently taken up? It's nope. croquet, isn't it? <laughs> Shall I tell you? Yeah. The maraca-shaking 90s wild man has fallen in love with fishing. And how is Bez making the most of his new pastime? Fishing. Yes. <laughs> Essentially, he's been making a bit of extra money on the side uh, by supplying the mackerel and lobster to a local restaurant. Having taken up fishing off the coast of Cornwall, Bez says, we've caught a mackerel and a lobster, making him by far the most successful British fisherman since Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> what does Facebook founder Mark Zuckerberg enjoy doing? We mentioned it before. Oh, it's stealing data. <laughs> Didn't we say jiu jitsu before? Yes, we'd said it. I said it about half host. an hour ago, but it's a long night. <laughs> it's a long night. I've just sat here for the last two minutes thinking, have I got the wrong end of the stick on this? <laughs> <laughs> he took up mixed martial arts during the pandemic and last week took part in his first uh, Brazilian jiu jitsu tournament, oh. where he won gold and silver medals. <laughs> Is that because he beat Brazilian. himself up? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a cue. Uh, uh, he did post about it on Facebook, uh, so only his auntie Donna liked the achievement. <laughs> um, how has Zuckerberg's trainer described his talent? <laughs> He's very rich. <laughs> <laughs> a fellow sparring partner and trainer, Kai Wu, called him a silent killer. Here is Mark exhibiting one of his moves, deploying a silent killer in the face. <laughs> Is horrid. It's like that. It's like the French economy minister's novel. Yes. <laughs> That's going to smell of Scotch eggs, isn't it? You can just <laughs> tell. Everything smells of Scotch eggs when it's that close to your face. Um, now, what? There speaks the voice of experience. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> what? What sport have some dogs at a pet expo in Thailand been getting involved with? Nothing to do with skateboarding. It is skateboarding. It's in the picture. Is it? So it's, cool. it's the picture that you're showing. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Here's a big fluffy white dog on a skateboard. Uh, here's a collie testing out the brakes. Lassie found that uh, in an abandoned mine shaft. Little Timmy won't be needing it anymore. <laughs> Time now for the missing words round, which this week features as its guest publication the Chelsea Speleological Society newsletter, the newsletter for caving enthusiasts across the UK. The online version does attract a lot of trolls. <laughs> we start with sheep. What to stop it getting what? Sheep shag to stop it getting boring. <laughs> <laughs> you see, if you put that on Newsnight, it's the first item. <laughs> sheep forced to join the Labour Party to stop it getting chairmanship of the BBC. <laughs> <laughs> Laminated to stop it getting wet. That's a really good idea. Uh, the answer is sheep wears foam necklace to stop it getting stuck no. in fence. There's no more undignified sight than a sheep with its head stuck in a fence. Oh, no, sorry. <laughs> there it is. The lamb has been seen wandering around in Scotland wearing a crash helmet. Mind you, they're all made to dress like that on Clarkson's farm. <laughs> Next up, 
Shoppers in Swindon panic when what? Reminded they live in Swindon. <laughs> Shoppers in Swindon panic <laughs> when pigeon flies into Primark. Do anything for a sausage roll. <laughs> Here is the pigeon causing all that panic. <laughs> Primark doesn't usually sell white goods, but after the pigeon had departed, they had no choice. <laughs> Next, office worker opens fridge to find what? Oh, office worker opens fridge to find Boris Johnson hiding from ITV reporter. <laughs> <laughs> it's someone hasn't bought any more milk. You're so nearly there. Office worker opens fridge to find colleague has padlocked milk. Yeah, milk. <laughs> well, sometimes you Blimey. have to. Yeah. Hit... That's, just, that's just fortified milk, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Here is the padlock milk. Chris, it's basically milk <laughs> with a padlock. Oh. I find writing caution breast milk on a post it also works. <laughs> um, <laughs> next up. Man who dedicated his life to finding the Loch Ness Monster says... I need help. <laughs> 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 says, I may have been mistaken, as I don't believe the monster now exists, having devoted 30 years of my life looking for it. I somehow felt this as a mythology that was built up in around about 1932 when the Daily Mail ran a series of stories which later turned out to be hoaxes. <gasps> you see, I can't see how, how yeah, blocked out huge. the text is, mate. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, I'd have gone with shit. Yeah. <laughs> Man who dedicated his life to finding the Loch Ness Monster says, I thought this job would be easier. <laughs> Finally, the Charterhouse Cave big exploration was delayed because Alex Watt, Clive Watt and Dave Watt. <gasps> the Charterhouse Cave big exploration was delayed because Alex didn't turn up, Clive hadn't got over his divorce <laughs> and Dave ate the map. <laughs> 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 The Charterhouse Cave big exploration was delayed because Alex forgot his wellies, yeah. Clive... <laughs> Clive forgot the ladder and Dave had changed the entrance locks. <laughs> so this is very exciting. The final scores are Ian and Kirsty have five, Paul and Chris have five! <laughs> well done, sir. On which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Kirsty Walk, Paul Merton and Chris McCausland, and I leave you with news that at the karaoke, one singer surprises onlookers with a spirited rendition of Madonna's Like a Virgin. <laughs> At the House of Commons, there's a rumour that the Home Secretary might be in a bit of a mood. <laughs> and in New York, a leaked photo from a toupee factory suggests Donald Trump is nearly ready to begin his presidential campaign. <laughs> <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> <laughs>